Hello and welcome back to another video. I wanted to make a more casual video today, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna get tense up in here. So let's check out some horror games on the Xbox 360. So this video might be on the longer side. I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet because I have two big stacks of games that I picked out. And I'm mostly focused on kind of the series that uh, the 360 had in terms of the horror games. I might split it up into two videos, um, but if I don't, make sure to grab a snack, grab a drink, grab a strong drink, question mark, or whatever people say these days. Um, I know a lot of people like listening to videos in the background too, so this might be a good video for that. So the plan here is just to go through all the physical copies that I have picked out here from our collection and kind of give my impressions of them and talk about some achievements, completions, that sort of thing. Uh, I played most of them, but if I get to a game that I haven't played for full transparency, I'm not going to pretend like I played it. I'm just going to tell you, hey, I bought this, haven't played it yet. And that's just the story there. So, all right. So let's just jump in before I ramble on any more here. So first up, we have Alan Wake. I have spoken about this game numerous times on our channel. Uh, I think this is one of the best horror games on the 360. It was an exclusive at the time, but obviously since then, it's been uh, released for uh, all the other consoles, I think, at least on PlayStation as well. Uh, definitely worth checking this one out. I think it's got that mystery thriller and horror elements as well, uh, that uh, you know, third-person shooter. So I really enjoyed this game. And I also wanted to mention that it has uh, a sequel, Alan Wake's American Nightmare. It's more of an action horror uh, arcade game, if you may. So it has a little bit of a side story, has some horde mode, and uh, it gives a little bit of backstory to Alan Wake as well. So it's uh, significantly shorter than this game. It's not quite as good, but uh, definitely worth checking out. It did not get a physical release, but you can get it in the newer uh, Xbox store, uh, backwards compatible as well. So both of them are actually. And for the achievements, they're all just story related stuff, collectibles, uh, no multiplayer, thankfully. So it's all single player stuff. Um, it, it will take a couple of playthroughs uh, to get it done. And it has DLC as well, which uh, you can still buy that, I believe. Um, and I think even Quantum Break had it as well. So if you ever find that game, uh, it has an Alan Wake code in there. Um, but either way, both, both games are worth checking out. They're great to add to a collection and great to play as well. Next up here, we have sort of a trilogy. Um, not really fully related other than the brand or the uh, franchise. So that's Aliens vs. Predator. This is really more... It's really more of a first-person shooter, but, uh, you know, it's it's an Aliens game, so, you know, you always want to consider that to be a horror game, right, from the 70s and 80s and even in the 90s, the movies, and um, so this one is one that I've actually only done the multiplayer achievements in so far. I haven't played through the campaign. I know that you have different campaigns for the different uh, factions, in a sense, you know, you have the Alien a campaign you have the soldier campaign and then the predator campaign so i have heard good things about this game though i i can't really vouch for it because i haven't experienced it myself but i think the completion is pretty lengthy the achievements can get a bit tough um especially on the harder difficulties and stuff so but uh it's one game i'm looking forward to and it's backwards compatible as well i'm a good one having the collection and in addition to that i wanted to show this as well because I think this is one of my favorite steelbooks on the 360, actually. And I just happened to come across this uh, not too long ago. Maybe last year at some point. So you have uh, the Predator on the back. And then you have the Alien on the front. And obviously you have the Spine here still. And then just uh, regular stuff that comes with uh, the standard edition. You just have the manual and the disc in here. But yeah, really cool. And it has this really cool slip cover too. That's kind of see-through. So yeah, if you come across this one, I definitely would recommend picking it up if you're if you're into the steelbooks. All right, next one here is uh, yeah, same series, a little more notorious for all the wrong reasons, right? So Aliens, Colonial Marines. I mean, I think everyone, if you followed any sort of uh, 
E3 or any sort of launch trailers and previews, this one was advertised as this amazingly graphically impressive game. And then it came out and no one was impressed by it at all. So unfortunately, another game that I haven't played. Um, and it may be because, yeah, everyone says it's not that great. But, you know, another first person shooter, a little bit more action oriented uh, again. So um, maybe that wasn't quite what fans of the series were looking for still. But it had promise, but um, this was kind of stuck in development hell, I think, for a long time. So they just couldn't quite get it right. But again, I will still give it a shot. The achievements in this one too, I think are, again, there's some multiplayer in there as well. Uh, you can do co-op campaign and there's also some DLC in there. So, uh, but overall, it looks like it's a slightly easier completion than uh, Aliens vs. Predator. So, but you still probably need to find some people to play with uh, to get all the achievements done. So, and then lastly, let's check out the best one. And I think a lot of people will agree, Alien Isolation. This is Nostromo edition. I think that's the only edition that came out. And obviously this was a release on the Xbox One as well. And it has like a uh, crew expendable DLC that you can get in here and two discs because this was pretty late in the Xbox 360 uh, life cycle. Uh, but I played this one on Xbox One and I think it's probably one of the best horror games of the 7th and 8th gen um and that's not exaggerating uh, it's um it's probably the best ai of any enemy that i've played you know in in the uh, in this type of game because it's very easy to get that wrong where you know a lot of people might say that the alien is overly aggressive i think that it was actually done right maybe towards the end of the game the alien gets a little bit more aggressive than uh, than you would like but it's also building that tension, like you you know you're getting towards the end of the game. So naturally, the alien aliens are gonna be yeah a little bit more on your on your trail in a sense. So, but um, yeah, it's it's on the longer side too. So this is definitely, I would say, maybe 20 hours plus uh, just for a playthrough, which is kind of long for a uh, even for a survival horror game. Uh, but uh, plenty of content. There's some slowdown chapters right in there and there's um to building tension right i think that's the whole point of these types of games but um i i really like the stealth in it it works really well and obviously you know when you use the weapons or anything at your disposal flares that sort of thing right so you you can survive yeah flamethrower i was gonna say that that's a good weapon to kind of get the alien off of you uh, at least temporarily but uh stealth is really at the forefront here and that's what i like whenever they do stealth and survival horror at the same time it makes for an even better experience in in my opinion so definitely don't don't sleep on this one i know a lot of people uh when the game first came out said that they just put it down because it was too hard or um they couldn't get past certain levels but yeah i, I would recommend if you have tried it and you put it down give it another shot and if uh, you haven't played this uh, before, this should be uh, at the top of your list for games to play. Really good game. And if we talk about achievements for this game, the achievement list on the 360 should be the same as the Xbox One. So you have the normal playthrough, if you may, just enjoy the game. Uh, and then you have the very, very difficult, probably one of the most difficult achievements, I would say, to go through the game without dying. Um, so that's been, uh, that's a very testing experience for sure. Uh, I did complete this game. Um, so yeah, but it, it's a good challenge. So if you really like the game, I, um, you know, it's something you just got to try. All right, moving on to a game or series, I would say, especially this first game. Uh, and it makes me very happy that people have talked about this quite a bit lately in other videos I've seen um, and they have fought very fond memories of it and that's Condemned Criminal Origins and this um, this was a launch title for the Xbox 360 back in 2005 I had actually previously tried to play this on PC before I moved on to console and I couldn't get it to run for some reason so I, I never finished it but I, I remember just being in those subway tunnels and 
uh, subway station, the, I mean, I think it's a pretty well known, like the creepy department store stands out with all the mannequins. But I, I couldn't get it to run uh, properly, so I had to wait several years before I got a 360 to actually uh, play it fully. And I think this is also one of the, probably one of the best uh, horror games yeah, on uh, 7th gen. It's It's got this very, you feel very, in a sense, I don't know how to explain it, but you feel very alone in this game. You feel very isolated because you walk around trying to investigate all these murders, um, and then you get, in a sense, framed for those murders, and you have to kind of clear your name. And as you go through all these different areas of the game, it, again, slowly builds up that tension. You come across these crazy people that just want to attack you, and <laughs> you don't quite know why, but... It's, uh, it's running rampant uh, across the city, and then you, uh, you have, you know, whatever, a 2 by 4 a pipe to defend yourself with. But yeah, it's got really great atmosphere. I really, really enjoy this game, and I highly recommend you checking it out if you haven't. But it sounds like a lot of people speak very highly of this, so like I said, it's, uh, it's good to hear. I totally agree with it. Uh, and achievements for this one too are pretty easy, I would say. You know, it's just some collectibles. I think you have to pick up, pick up some. Uh, you have to pick up some dead birds. I think it is the collectibles, um, and then uh, you have to play through the game, obviously. And I'm trying to remember if there's like a hard playthrough or something. But overall, it's it's pretty simple to get through, um, and it has one of those weird. 970 gamer score um i think it was due to the fact they were trying to do some dlc early on but they weren't able to go over the thousand gamer score so it turned into like a weird completion that if you have ocd then it might be a problem but uh yeah it's that's the full that's the full completion for that game it's not a full thousand um but uh you know shouldn't be a, a reason to stay away from this game it's uh really really good and then the sequel here that came out a few years later uh, that's uh, Condemned to Bloodshot. So, you know, very similar to the first one, but very different in a lot of ways too, because this was more, I feel more of an action horror game rather than kind of like the survival horror type. It was more reliant on the fighting, the fist fighting. Uh, you also had multiplayer in this game, which was a little bit interesting. It wasn't, it was, it wasn't the, the worst multiplayer I've ever played, but... Uh, it was, it was definitely different, a lot of brawling. Uh, and of course you have like a first person shooter mode that you go through, it's one of the achievements as well. But you know, again, it's just a different experience. They just built on the first one and made it a little bit more action oriented, I would say. So uh, still a good game though. I, I did enjoy both of these. So if you talk about a duo of, of horror games on the 360 that you should check out, this would be a good place to start, honestly. That's, um, that's very early titles as well but uh, good tension in both of them and creepy. Like it's just very creepy. And then this one too, like I mentioned, like it has multiplayer. So with that, of course, came achievements with it too. There's, I think there's a viral achievement you have to get as well to, uh, yeah, to kill like 10, nine or 10 other people that have a certain achievement, which, you know, are getting harder and harder to do because less people play multiplayer and less people even have a 360 to play these games. But again, you know, if you don't care about that kind of stuff, then you know, play through it normally, a couple of playthroughs. Uh, and I think it's just the usual stuff there too. Nothing, uh, nothing stands out really that I remember of uh, being too difficult but uh, like I said you might have fun after doing one playthrough and then you do a first person shooter mode playthrough then you might have some fun with that so it's that's one of the reasons I like doing achievements because you get to see different aspects of the game that I think the developer wants you to check out and you get to pick right if you want to play it that way so there's no there's no pressure to do it that way all right let's move on to a series that I think a lot of people will be familiar with, and uh, it's one of my favorite series too, by far. So let's start with uh, Dead Space. So I actually remember playing the demo of this uh, first, and which is funny because it wasn't the first Dead Space I played, but uh, I had um, I had played the demo, and at this point I hadn't really been familiar with Resident Evil. I knew what Resident Evil was. I'd seen gameplay of Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube, uh, but I had never played a game like this. So it was very different for me to jump into something like that. 
I remember having a good experience with it. Uh, but it really wasn't until, I'm not going to jump ahead, obviously, we we're talking about Dead Space here, but uh, this is the original Dead Space, obviously. Uh, they just came out with a remake, which was really good. Um, and I definitely recommend checking that out as well. So just like I've said in the previous video about other games, you know, always check out the original first, you know, and then go to a remake or a remaster just to see what they changed. This is one of the all-time greats, for sure. Um, the controls weren't as refined as some of the later ones, but that's okay. They were trying to get as close as possible to the Resident Evil 4 formula, right? So it's like a mix of Alien and Event Horizon, if, if anyone remembers that movie. Um, so you're just stuck on the ship and trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, yeah, it's uh, very tense. Uh, at that point, like I said, I hadn't played anything like like that but yeah great game to add to any collection too and uh this is definitely one of the all-time greats and you should check out this one and the remake and for the achievements in dead space um it's a lot of you know weapon related stuff that you have to do uh one hard playthrough uh which isn't too bad actually that's at least it's not like anything like dead space 2 where you have to do limited saves but it is um i would say it's a more friendly achievement list than some of the later ones so uh, but overall, worth the challenge and uh, great to play through at least twice. And then, of course, came the sequel, which is my favorite of the three. So this was also my first Dead Space, so maybe that counts a little bit in my favor that this was the first one. Came on two discs, which was interesting. Every time uh, you had anything come on two discs on the... 360 and you had to like swap it in whatever chapter it was then uh, just good memories but also kind of annoying um but um no this one i think kind of upped the game a little bit from the original uh it made the controls tighter i think it was more fluid um and it was just I, to me at least it was just better pacing i know that uh, obviously the first one was trying to go for more slower pacing and build up and then this one was a little bit more action which maybe i prefer that type of game and then um compared to the first one too they added a voice actor to isaac clark so i i think that added to it some people might disagree and say it took away from the tension a little bit but i was always a little bit confused why it just it put me in the place of this guy as if i was the you know in third person so um i actually like that they added a voice actor to it because to me, it made it uh, even more immersive, and so to speak, in a third-person game, at least. But yeah, great story, and and even if Dead Space 2 is my favorite, I still recommend starting with the first one, and don't do like me and start in the middle, because that <laughs> you miss out on a lot of the story. So definitely start with one, and then uh, move on to two, but uh, shouldn't be missed. This is, I think, uh, again, one of the best games of that generation. And I'm hoping for a remake of this one, too. I, I'm not sure if they need it, but... Uh, still very playable today uh, but uh, it would always be nice to get some updated graphics more achievements right like a different uh, different take on it like uh, the dead space remake did i thought that was very clever so hopefully we'll see something similar there and then the achievements for this one it's very similar to the first one you know you have a lot of story progression weapons you have to use uh of course uh there's the infamous hard hard to the core achievement that uh, only allows you three saves throughout the whole playthrough. It's still, I think, on normal difficulty or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the difficulty was for it, but um, but it is at least hardcore. And uh, yeah, you can die very easily if you don't, uh, if you're not careful and plan that out well. So, but it's, it's a great experience though. Um, so I definitely say worth trying it if you like the game. Uh, and it actually has a good, uh, DLC uh, with this game as well. So I would uh, recommend getting that as well. Uh, it gives a different perspective from a different character and uh, yeah, also great to play. And then of course, moving on to the third one, Dead Space 3. This is the limited edition. I don't know if this was the only edition they released, but uh, this one came out a little bit later. I would say like a 2012, 2013, this game came out. Uh, also has two discs, so you uh, had to deal with that disc swap there as well. Uh, it's always <laughs> it's always fun. Like I, I'm not going to go on too much about disc swapping, but when you're in a tense game, the last thing you want to do is like swap your discs out. But 
Uh, anyway, that's how it was, obviously, with the 360. It didn't have uh, Blu-ray, so you just had to deal with it. Uh, but again, you know, it was a game that had a lot of promise. They tried to introduce uh, co-op in this one, and uh, it was a much longer campaign, from what I remember. And they kind of did a Max Payne on this one, where you had to play through it, I don't know how many times, four or five times, maybe? Um, so it was a little bit excessive. I don't know what they were going for, but... Obviously, if you don't do achievements, you probably had a good time with this uh, for, you know, one playthrough. Um, I, I like the, the snow setting. I like this uh, planet. Was it uh, Tau Volantis or something like that? So, yeah, I like the setting of the game. Not quite sure if I liked it as much as the other two. I'm not going to be overly negative towards this game like a lot of people are. Because I still think it's, it's good to experience it. It gave a different perspective on it, too, where they're trying to probably close out the trilogy and uh i think they struggled a little bit with the story though it wasn't as engaging i didn't care as much about that uh, especially this love triangle thing they were going for that was not really <laughs> there was no place for it in my opinion but uh i mean the, the gameplay is pretty solid you know you had a little more even more action in this one with uh smgs and a lot of human enemies too so it may have taken away from the actual survival horror aspect of it that I think the other two games did a lot better. So the progression was kind of like going from survival horror to action horror to, yeah, even more action horror. So it, it was interesting, to say the least, and uh, not to mention the achievements. Again, pretty rough to play through all of that as well. You know, a lot of playthroughs. Um, and uh, another hardcore achievement that uh, may actually be harder than the second one, um, if you look at it that way. But uh, but it's overall a, a decent game, though. You know, it shouldn't be passed up on. And uh, I recommend all three of these games to play. This is a great trilogy, and uh, again, one of the best of this generation for sure. All right, moving on to a series that, at the time I played it, at least, kind of flew under the radar. I would say it wasn't. As talked about, I feel like reviewers didn't give it good ratings at all. And that's Metro 2033. So while I understand that this first one here was a little bit rougher on the edges, I, I don't think this was fully realized yet. Obviously, this is based on a very famous uh, book series. I appreciate that the author actually contributed to making these games. I think that always helps right like he knows the source material so better than anyone um so this had an atmosphere and an environment unlike any other so it's like post-apocalyptic uh moscow and people live in the subways and um they have to get from one location to another either to uh not to sound like walking dead here but like to find resources find people right um so they're stuck underground because once they go up to the surface there's radiation there's um obviously these mutated monsters that are roaming around anything from these big apes to uh to demons and whatnot so uh yeah really cool concept for a game and it worked really well too because you have that survival and you have horror at the same time but also you know action in there too with the gunplay so yeah, it's, I can't say that this is underrated, obviously, because it's uh, well-known at this point due to Metro Exodus. But uh, this game, I think, uh, would be a good place to start. Uh, I will say, though, although we're talking about the 360, I think the remake of this game is phenomenal. They did a great job in incorporating what they improved on in the sequel and put it into this remake. Uh, great. So, But, you know, you can play this. It has some... I will say some annoying achievements in this one where you have to, I think either, um, yeah, where you have to like visit every area or talk to every person, that kind of stuff, which are, is never fun in my opinion when they put that kind of stuff in games. But overall, yeah, you have uh, an extra playthrough that you can do that makes things a little bit harder, takes away your HUD and takes away your um, ammo count, right? You can't see how much ammo you have left. And obviously you have to check your gas mask and all that stuff too. So no, I'm... I think, again, they did a fantastic job in just incorporating all these things. So it fully immersed you in that world where you had to, like, change out your filter and wipe your mask and stuff like that, right? And then the mask cracked even, so it made it even more terrifying. So, 
yeah but otherwise like the achievement list there too is is doable so yeah nothing nothing too much to worry about just that last playthrough that you need as part of a dlc the ranger mode uh that's gonna take a little bit of effort but uh you know it's uh if you know the game it's it's easier to get through then you might not need to know how much filter you have left and you can check your watch and stuff like that so but yeah really good that leads me to the sequel which was the first one i played and as you can see there's a theme here of me playing sequels first i guess um but it's just it had a lot to do with when i started playing on the 360 around 2011 a lot of these games came out a lot of sequels came out so this was the first one and again same thing i don't think this got rave reviews anywhere um and even if you go back online and look at that like i think in hindsight yeah people are appreciating them a lot more now but uh this one continued that story from the first one uh and uh built on it a little bit more too away from the books as far as i understand so it wasn't just material from the books um they wrote like a different story and uh tied it into the books in a sense which i also think is really cool but this one refined the controls by a mile i mean the controls in the sequel in metro last light is uh, so much better they improved the stealth as well which as you can probably tell by now i appreciate when they improve stealth in games because uh stealth is a tough thing to get right and once they get it right it works well so and it makes sense for this game as well because you are trying to sneak around stuff not so much the mutated monsters and stuff it's a little bit tougher of course uh, but uh, when it comes to the human enemies and stuff yeah you definitely don't want to take on like 12 people 12 guys at once and uh not come out on top there but again a game i can't recommend enough i think um playing through this too uh similar it has some less than desirable dlc attached to this one it has again the ranger mode uh, that puts your skills to the test after you've done a playthrough or two but otherwise it's very similar to the first one just story progression some weapons right and some miscellaneous things that you got to do but uh yeah the dlc has some horde mode and some weird stuff there that uh might take away from the overall experience of the game but you know if you want the completion that's part of it um but it's not something to worry too much about it's not overly difficult but uh but it's uh, worth experience as well so again another duo of games here that uh, you should miss on the 360 really great all right and uh, I guess this next one here would be very much a fan favorite. Everyone, you know, talks about these games still. And why was there never a third game, right? Like, that's only Valve can talk about that. So, uh, and that's Left 4 Dead. And here's that one. I mean, considered, I think, by many, one of the original, besides Dead Rising, I think one of the original kind of successful zombie games i mean i could be wrong there you can let me know in the comments if i'm missing any game there that came before those two that um that's kind of set the standard for the co-op zombie uh, game and uh so this this one you know is yeah it's a remarkable game really i mean it's uh it took what they did in half-life and made it into a zombie game you can definitely recognize the controls and uh, and I, I have to admit i wasn't sure about this game at first i was like i i don't know if i would like this like getting swarmed by zombies and just uh, very hectic and um you know because playing something like dead space you have enemies swarming you but you know they're not gonna come in hordes of it right uh, but i think they did this well and again like i said about the alien one this is also probably one of the best ais you can find what, what were they uh calling it like the director or something like that you know so it would just put out like random special infected and you know if you made noise obviously you would be alerted that hey a horde is coming now and you better find a place to camp and and get rid of them or run so uh yeah i think they did that well and of course the co-op aspect you can play up to four people um so there's there's hardly any better experience honestly on the 360 to play this uh type of game but yeah left for dead is a classic for sure um and then you know talking about achievements again here it's uh this one <laughs> i mean it's it's not the easiest i will say you know it's uh as it seems like with any zombie game they have to make it uh kind of uh terrible so um 
and uh, they were trying to match obviously the dead rising the death count of the amount of zombies that you need to kill i think it was like fifty three thousand something uh which i know in the dead rising game it was like the population of that town uh, so they kept upping it and other games tried that too, but it was mostly Dead Rising and Left 4 Dead that were going back and forth. But um, but yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, if you have people to play with, that makes it even easier. But there's a lot of miscellaneous ones that are annoying that you have to obviously kill certain special infected or do specific things. Um, and it also has some extra... Um, DLC campaigns as well, which are pretty good. But the one that you'll probably struggle the most with are, is the expert. Like that's uh, that's where you, yeah, you can have friendly fire and stuff like that. So even with your AI teammates, that can be a mixed bag sometimes. But uh, I think that if you play with others, yeah, you just got to be careful not to shotgun blast uh, someone else in the face, you know, and uh, expect them to not be downed. Um, so, but it's it's a fun experience. So it definitely takes practice. You have to play this through and just kind of enjoy it and then probably go for the achievements last. But, but yeah, it's a great co-op shooter for sure. And then, of course, we have Left 4 Dead 2. Can't forget that, which is... It came out... This was released you know, very shortly after the first one, so um, I'm not sure what the reason for that was, but lots of similarities, and people say this is the one to pick if you want to play the Left 4 Dead games, but of course, you know, if you go for achievements, completions, you know, play them both. Um, I think they're both worth experiencing. Uh, the DLC for this one was, I believe, the same as the first game, which was a little bit strange, but, uh, uh, but the overall game has different campaigns and stuff, different special infected, um, so yeah, you get to experience that. Uh, I think the controls, everything else is the same. Uh, you have different characters that you can play as, but um, you know, so really take your pick there if you prefer the original cast or if you like the Left 4 Dead 2 uh, cast. So, uh, and again, the achievements are very similar in this one too to the first one. Just uh, random special infected stuff and an expert campaign, and so yeah, but uh, very similar, uh, but worth having in your collection for sure. And worth playing with others. And then, of course, you know, this is another early series that started on the 360. The next one here. And people consider this to be one of the original kind of horror shooters, like creepy shooters that mixed, yeah, first person shooting with horror. Uh, and that's Fear. I actually remember when this came out, I was. Uh, yeah, a lot of talk about this, how different it was, where it was combining those two that I mentioned. But, uh, of course, I did not play this for a long time. I actually completed this game, I don't know, a couple of years ago. I'm going to put this far to the left because I think you can probably guess that there's, uh, yeah, there's more games to come. So I think Fear is also one of those really great horror series from this generation. And they made you know, multiple games, as you'll see here soon. Uh, but it had that good mix, like I said, of the first-person shooting. Uh, you had the slowdown mechanics and obviously the very unsettling antagonist that showed up from time to time to freak you out. And this is one of those games where you have to experience it. Um, it's one of the earlier titles, of course, so it's going to look a little bit simpler in terms of the graphics and stuff. But still, it doesn't take away from the... Uh, from the experience, you know, from the atmosphere that they're creating here. It also is probably one of the unfriendlier uh, achievement lists that I've experienced. Uh, I, yeah, I finished this a few years ago after doing the multiplayer a long time ago, which also takes a big chunk of time. But it's really the campaign that takes the most time because you have very strange requirements that I think a lot of people did away with later on. Um, Things like go through a campaign under 500 bullets and or using under 500 bullets. Don't pick up any like re reflectors or whatever those reflex injectors things. And um, yeah, so it was it was a <laughs> and then I think there was a no dying one, too. So it's something that would require multiple playthroughs, even if at that point you really don't want to play the game anymore. But uh, shouldn't take away from the whole thing, though, you know, because I think it's still a great game. But yeah, if you, if you do all of that, it's going to be a little bit taxing. Um, and then on top of that, you have, like I said, multiplayer achievements. And then you have the instant action, which is more of like a horde mode arcade style thing. 
you go through a level in a certain time frame and that can be tough too because there's some enemies that can like one shot you and ruin your entire run so uh so yeah definitely something to keep in mind but again it's one of those early titles but definitely should start with that one and then they continued on with fear files so this is like a standalone uh, expansion pack and i thought that's what it really was so i didn't actually pick this one up for a while uh, but uh, it's very similar to the first game i haven't played through this all the way but it has two separate campaigns there the extraction point and the perseus mandate uh campaigns uh, so I started this one a few years ago. Same thing, I just got the multiplayer done in this game. Just to be sure, because I think a lot of people do. If you're in the achievement community, you know, you just kind of try to get multiplayer done because at no moment's notice will they shut down things, even if it's seemingly peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, type of thing, then they might still disconnect that and uh it's no longer available to do so um that's pretty much what i played on that one but again very similar to the first one the achievements seem to be very similar as well maybe a little bit more lenient but i heard that the instant action was harder in this one so but we'll see uh but again good one i think this is actually the rarest one uh physical release on the 360 so uh if you get your hands on that one for cheap definitely pick it up all right and then Moving to the first one I played, which was Fear 2 Project Origin. Fear Alma again, of course. So this one... Yeah, this one upped the, again, uh, graphics a little bit and made it maybe a little bit more action-oriented as well. I uh, still think it's a great game, though. Um, it's, um, yeah, follows in the same vein as the previous titles uh, in the series. Um, and then, of course, when it comes to achievements, this one's probably the most notorious one in the series because it has that very long multiplayer grind that you have to do, or you don't have to do it, but, you know, if you play these types of games, uh, that's what happens. So uh, that one's a bit brutal. The single player campaign and even the DLC campaign is very enjoyable. So it doesn't have too much. Um, I think it might have one for not dying. Um, it's been a while since I played this one, but I liked it. So um, and this made obviously the series. I think for most of it, it's made by the same uh, people that made Condemned. So you can kind of see that same, same atmosphere that they uh, created here. Other than the achievements, yeah, this is uh, definitely a good game. And then the last one in the series... Fear 3. And this one is... This game didn't get as much uh, praise as I think... Uh, I think it should have gotten. I don't think this is as bad as people say. It might be a little bit different because they try to go for... Uh, not, not a more modern approach, but they introduce co-op in this one too. And I think the actual... It probably had the best gunplay. The weapons felt way better in this one. Obviously, all of these have that slowdown mechanic when you're shooting that recharges. And so, but overall, I think the actual gameplay was the best one of the series. Uh, and people of the people who are big fans of the original might disagree with that, but uh, they actually did a great job um, with that. And the co-op was interesting too. I mean, it had. You played as one brother and who could shoot and the other one had like magic powers of I'm trying to remember i think it was like possession or something like that right so he had different abilities so it just depends on who got who, who got the short straw i guess who got to shoot the whole game through or someone had to be the distraction or just kind of the the different type of gameplay there so but i, I think it was i think it was a different approach and yeah understandably people didn't like that but I think it's worth playing it. And um, I think this one has been a little bit harder to find in recent years as well. Great series. Like if you are new to kind of horror shooters, this is a great place to start. Achievements though. Yeah, not so much. And then the achievements in this one is probably on the milder side as well in Fear 3. It's not as as crazy as the other ones, I think. So not, not to my recollection at least. Uh, so, But uh, they eased up on that a little bit, which is good. All right, so after much deliberation and looking at my second stack, I've decided I'm going to do a second video as part two. So stay tuned for that. And the best way to do that is to subscribe and ring that bell. Otherwise, like the video if you enjoyed this and want to see more of this type of stuff. We appreciate you all. We'll see you in the next video.